We're now going to run through the setup and operation of the DV Prompter software. This is essential as it will enable the on-screen talent to follow the text on the teleprompter. The DV Prompter software can be downloaded for free online and this is powerful prompting software which gives you all the capabilities you need to do prompting in the studio or on location. So now we launch the DV Prompter software, just press the icon and it will launch. You get an advert straight away, which will be there just for a moment. Okay, now the first thing is let's just have a look at the settings on the left. I kind of think of this as the whole control center for the DV Prompter software. This is where it all happens. And most of it is really quite self-explanatory. You can obviously choose the font, the size of the font, the font color, the background color, whether you want it to be over black or whether you want black text over white, for example. Orientation, very important, whether you want to work in landscape mode or whether you want to work in portrait, very easy to set. Mirrored display, this is important as well because you may want to change the actual display so when it shines through the mirror, it's actually facing the right way. Obviously, a mirror will reverse the text, so you need to be able to set that correctly so the on-screen talent sees the text in the correct way. You can set it to loop, which is very handy if you want the text to run continuous over and over. Now we get to the all important controls where we set the scrolling speed so you can actually adjust the speed of the on-screen text. Now, it's not just as simple as controlling one parameter, which is scrolling speed. If we just look at scrolling speed, you'll see that we've got 10 equal increments in there. It's worth making the point that if you're gonna use a device without a remote control, you would set the scrolling speed in this area. If you're using an external remote control, you still set the scrolling speed, but you've got more options to set as well. Now you've got two things, slow time and fast time. Now, slow time refers to how long it takes to read a page of text without rushing it, a slow read. Fast time refers to how quickly you could read the same page of text at a quick read. Now, it's important to know that scrolling speed, the overall scrolling speed, gives you 10 equal increments between the slow and the fast settings. Now, I hope that makes sense because what it's giving you is very fine control. Just to make it really simple, if you're using a remote control, you do want to set the slow time in seconds for how long it takes to read the page of text. And you also want to set the fast time also in seconds. And once you set those two parameters, when you're using the remote control, you've got very fine control on actually adjusting the speed because the slow and the fast parameters relate to the overall scroll and speed. And it will be very obvious when you're using your external remote just what fine control you have. So it's very important to understand the speed settings. The scrolling speed gives you an overall control in equal increments. And then you've got slow time and fast time. And by setting these adjustments, when you're using an external remote control going up, going down, the speed can be adjusted in different increments and it's much finer control than if you work without the remote, in which case you've only got the scrolling speed settings to work by. Beyond the speed settings, you've got more controls. You can set a border on the text. You can actually justify the text. You can set that to left, center, or right, pretty simple. And then you've got other controls like auto start, if you want the text to just auto start as soon as you launch the software and other things like start delay. You might want to press the launch on the actual device and give yourself 10 seconds as it's set to there to actually put yourself in position and get reading. Okay, beyond that break marker, this is very important. You can put a marker within the script itself and then jump between different markers. So a very quick way to actually move between a script which may be long in duration. And very important, you can set the remote type. And if we just go into the options there, you can see you can set it to no remote at all, which means if you just want to use the device to read off and not have external control, you can set it going. I already mentioned you can set a delay so you can give yourself 10 or 15 seconds to get into position after you'd hit the start button. And beyond that, work with a wired remote, which means it's actually cabled to the device, or you can work with the Bluetooth external control, which does not have a cable. And if we just have a quick look at the remote, you can see we've got all the controls on it. This is actually the Bluetooth remote, and that's an aerial which feeds off the device. And 
the other one looks exactly the same and it's the wired remote which just means it's got a cable. Now that we've gone through the basic settings, we need to set up a document and get the text into it. To set up a text document within the DV Prompter software itself, simply press the plus button and you can give it a title and I'll call it test text. You can easily just type anything into your document. And the easy way to get your text in, because you probably don't want to type it all up, is just to copy it from an email or from another document within your device and press paste. And you can see straight away the text I've copied is pasted in. Press save and you can now see that within DV Prompter we've got three different documents. Two of them actually have the same text. That's because I actually copied the text from the first one. Like I said, the easiest way is to create your text document put it into an email and send it to yourself and then access it on the iPad or Android device, copy it and then paste it in. Okay, so once we've got that, you can see we've got controls under each of these documents stored within our device. And if I just press this button here, Okay, we've got different options. We can start, which means start the process of prompting. You can edit, get in and edit your text. You can copy the entire document, delete it, get rid of it entirely, or print it if you want to send it to a printer. If I just press start, you'll see that we get countdown from 10 seconds. This is optional. You can set the countdown. You don't have to have it there. And once it gets there, the text will scroll according to the speed we've set up. Now I'm not using this with an external remote at the moment, so it's just set according to the speed which we'd set in the options on the device. To get out of the scrolling text is very simple. Double tap on the screen and that will stop the text. And then if we press the play button, it will start it again. Double tap again to stop, press this button to exit and we're back to the interface that we'd already seen. Inserting break markers, which lets you jump between different portions of the text is really easy to set up. Press the arrow and then press edit. That takes you into the text. If I go between the paragraphs, press return. Now by default, you actually use the keys star and hash. That will set the break marker, save it. And what that means when you're doing the prompting process with the remote control, while you're in the teleprompting process, these arrows up and down are actually for speed control. However, when you press the green button, which is play pause, you can actually use the arrows to jump forward or backward according to where you'd set the markers. So it's a very quick way to go through your script and jump between different points. We've been through the operation of the DV Prompter software. We've shown you the options and settings, gone through how to set the speed, how to enter the text, either by typing it in or by bringing in an email, how to set breakpoints, which is very important. Just a few more tips. Remember to turn off your device's auto lock and auto sleep because the last thing you want is for your device to go to sleep while you're in the middle of doing a long read, especially if it's live to air to a very large audience or even if you're just recording it. So turn off any sleep features. Also switch off any mobile phones or email devices simply because the last thing you want is for an email to come through while you're busy prompting and it'll make a noise or it'll interrupt the process. Beyond this, Turn off the pairing on the Bluetooth remote control while you're actually entering your text. Reason being, the remote, when you're using Bluetooth, is actually seen as a keyboard entry device. So it takes over the keyboard that would normally be built into the device, what you're using. So it can interfere. So switch off the Bluetooth, do your script, and then when you're ready to go, put the Bluetooth back on. And the final point is very obvious, make sure you've got enough battery life, especially if it's an important read, if you're going live to air, we all know that time is money and the last thing you want is to do a brilliant read and then three seconds before the end, the last two lines, suddenly the device switches off and you've lost that wonderful take. So most of that's common sense, but they're important points to remember. So let's show you some of the prompting process in action. So if I just press this arrow, press start, we get the countdown. You can switch that off if you want. As I mentioned, the countdown is optional. Okay, and you can see we have some beautiful scrolling text. Now, if I just show you the remote control while I operate, if I press the arrow up, you see that the speed increases. That's quite fast. And I can go the opposite way and slow it right down. So 
these are set in the settings that we've already been through the various settings for slow time fast time and the overall speed setting and you can see once again I can speed that up if I press the green button that's to stop start I can then scroll up in the text between breakpoints or scroll down between breakpoints and I'm sure you get a very good idea as to how useful that is that's just press the green button which is stop start and then the arrow up arrow down and the red button actually takes us back to the point where we can exit the whole prompting process so that's what you need to know to do prompting with the DV prompter software in combination with the data video teleprompters the TP500 TP600 and TP300